What's up guys, it's Daz here. But you don't really care as we've made it to the top of Ploymus Mountain. Even though technically we didn't need to for the story, we already had plenty of shock arrows and now, this episode, we're going to the East Reservoir Lake in order to take on Divine Beast Varuta. If you're just coming into the series now, then you may be surprised to hear that this is our fourth and final Divine Beast. While most people probably do this guy last, or first even, we are doing it last. We actually went through the four Divine Beasts in the least common way possible. There was a statistic put up on the Zelda subreddit in which they went through and surveyed who went in what order. The way we went is the rarest. Fun fact. Glad to see you're ready to go, Link. Are you ready for this? Do you have your Zora armor and enough shock arrows? I'm ready. Wonderful! You never cease to amaze, Link. Now then, let us go and appease that divine beast at once. Here we go! Hmm. Gaze now upon the divine beast's back! Do you see those glowing pink orbs? You will need to shoot each of them with a shock arrow. With your Zora armor, you're, you now have the ability to ascend waterfalls. Shall I take you right up to the? I shall. So I should take you right up to the side of the divine beast. From there, you can swim up and take aim. I know you can do it. I believe in you. Now hurry up and get on my back. I'm ready. Good answer. Let's get going. Okay, here we go. Ha! I am unstoppable in the water! Rooter is responding to our presence. I'll move away and wait for an opening before we approach. Oh, keep going at full speed! It's up to you to ward off Rooter's attacks. Are you ready? Divine Beast Far Rooter will undoubtedly use its ancient and mysterious powers against us. That includes hurling giant ice blocks that we will need to watch out for. I shall leave those to you. Alright, welcome to Divine Beast Var Ruta. You have a bunch of ice blocks chasing you. You could shoot them down, or you could just use Cryonis yourself to smash them like anything else. Bam! Here we go. I keep messing up the guy's voice. I keep forgetting how it sounds because he hasn't spoken in a while, but oh well. Anyway, let's send our way up. And I should probably get out the right weapon. That is my camera. Can I choose? Okay, there we go. I'm a little rusty on a weapon. Uh, yeah, buttons, apparently. All right, 49 shock arrows. We should be good. Bam. If you're smart enough, you can also do two. For some reason, when you do hit and shoot, it will take you out of the slow motion. And I don't understand why, but it does. There we go. Lovely. Cool. Right. Watch that ice, indeed. Now he's got spiky ice balls. These guys won't chase you in the air. They will chase you in the water. Again, you can just do the same thing as you've done before. They're just slightly harder to get after. Also, as you defeat more and more of his little electric reservoirs, I guess, these icy attacks will get faster and faster. So do be aware that that will be a thing for you. Get those, shock those shock arrows got them already. And... All right, go. Yes. Right. Bam. Glide. Bam! I missed. Hold on. I missed again. Oh, come on. That would have been a flawless run. Ah, oh, damn it. Okay. Oh, we're right by the ice. Hold on. All right, fine. An extra round, sure. I guess I get to show off all the attacks. Now we've got both ice blocks and ice spikes. Oh, that's what happens when you get hit. I am really doing kind of poorly on this. I did really well with this in my practice file. Like, generally, it's supposed to be... Well, I guess it's not that easy of a battle, but it's supposed to be the easiest Divine Beast if it's one of the first. Oh, well. B -b 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 get out of here. Boom. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, you're angry. Okay. Got the shock arrows ready. We, we never really got rid of them, so... Try this one last time, I guess. Come on. There we go. And... You put me on the wrong side, Sidon. Oh, good job. I'm tempted to land on the beast, but I feel like that won't go down well, so let's just glide on over. Boom. Wow, that was astounding. An absolute thrill. That text box went way too fast. Huh. 
Link, look! The water spouting from Ruta has slowed down. Ruta is floating higher now! You wanted to venture inside it, right? I'll bring you closer. We're counting on you, hero. Do good work in there. Well, Link, here we are. Looks like this is where the real work starts. Best of luck. Nice job cutting off the water flow from this divine beast. Show the enemy no fear. I'll see you back at Zor's domain. Farewell. The Guidance Stone there contains the information that you will need. Alright, welcome to Divine Beast Varuta. Now for once, you don't actually need to go to the back end of it to get a treasure, and really the view isn't as amazing as pretty much all the others, but that doesn't matter. This is a very basic Divine Beast, and chances are you know how to defeat this beast. Everyone else has completed it, and I'm the last one to ever do it, so we'll try and see if we can get through this nice and quickly. Starting off, there is a scout guarding to the right, which we'll deal with in a minute. But first, let's get rid of the malice in the room. There's also a treasure chest in this very first clump of water, hidden in an extra little lower bit bank that's there for some reason. A nice, simple ancient spring. Coolie ooly oolio. Don't know why I said it like that, but I did. Right, scout guardians really do go easily now, don't they? Huh. Really just shows how strong Link's gotten over the past. Anyway, next up we need to actually unlock the map for this place and you need to use a puzzle thing that we haven't really seen since the Great Plateau, really. Lifting up doors using Cryonis. It seems to only ever be used in the Great Plateau and here. It's interesting to me. And anyway, with that we get to see the big ol' elephant in his full glory. Whilst the Ritos had a bird that moved its wings, the Gerudo had a camel that moved its stomach, and the Gorons had a lizard that moved its entireness. The Zora have a elephant that moves its trunk in like 12 different positions. Actually, I think that's 10, but still. Wow. Good. You've obtained the map of the Divine Beast. You will see several glowing points on your map which represent the terminals that control Ruta. Take Ruta back by activating all of the terminals. Be careful. And yet, in the most basic tutorial Divine Beast, they still don't tell you that you can move the Divine Beast. They never tell you. That's just bad game design, am I wrong? Even the basic first one doesn't say, by the way, move the trunks and maybe you can do stuff with the terminal. They just don't ever tell you. Really, I don't know why. Do they assume you knew? I mean, the, sh the only way I found out was just guessing and looking it up in a guide before I realised I could move my first Divine Beast, which was, um, Rudania. Oh well. Anyway, the first uh, terminal can be found by turning this little switchity witch with Magnesis. There are four terminals remaining. Don't give up. 
cool. Now this guy is very simply just a basic p uh, path to go on. Now the door doesn't actually open, or the spinning thing doesn't actually open this door, it's been open the whole time, but it is a region we will be coming to later, it's just a big watery room. There's nothing really in here for us other than the final terminal. <gasps> Spoilers! We go there for the final terminal. Is that really a big spoiler? Probably not because you can see it in its design. Anyway, next up we need to go a level up higher. We're no longer dealing with its uh, bowels. We're now going to go up to its stomach, if I have the stamina to get up this thing. There's a couple of malice spikes to be concerned about, but they're not really that concerning. There's also this little ridge here. There's no treasure here. That's my way of trying to check it for you. Ooh, a, gu a scout guardian mark too. Well, he still goes down pretty quickly too. Goodbye. Right, now that we're here, there's a few things we can do. You can see there is a moving wheel and a non-moving wheel. We need to make one stop and the other go. At least at one point in the d d divine beast. So, first things first, what you can do is you can see there's a terminal in that second wheel and another one in this one. What we need to do, first things first, is, well, we can do things in any sort of order. We're going to move the trunk. Because doing that will create a spout of water. The trunk is forever spouting out water and it will make the other wheel move. Meanwhile, we can use Cryonis on this waterfall here, which is kind of smart, to stop the other one. You don't necessarily have to have one moving and the other one stopping, but this is the two interactions you can do with the two wheels. When you do that, the water drains down a little bit and it'll stop, so obviously you can access a terminal in this left wheel. There are three terminals remaining. You can do it. Cool. Now let's move on further because we now need to go a level, another level higher. Unless, of course, I cheat it by using Rivali's Gale, which I could do. Anyway, we're going to get the wheel to move again because there's also some stuff to collect on this wheel. So, as you can tell, the whole thing's spinning. You can use it as a platform very nice and easily. So first things first, what we're going to do is we're going to get the treasure off to the further along upper path. You know what I'm talking about. You can just see the treasure. Use the small wheel spinning about to get it. Though technically, I guess you could use the big wheel too. Nice. A dazzling hundred rupees. Cool. Now that we're done with that, we're now officially going to go up a floor level. And this is the same as the path on the other side, except there's a few more malice, including one with a mouth. Well, he's gone. As does the cursed Bacoblin. Lovely. Right. Level up, I guess, technically. Now we are up on the big wheel, and there's a couple things we can do. First things first, there is this. I messed up. There's this chest. What you need to do is you need to do sta stasis on one of these stones to make one move and the other stay in place. You want to do it to the one that's more towards the circumference of the actual, like, the edge of the wheel. The other thing is this switch here. Gale is now ready. The ball needs to be attached to keep this door open to actually access the terminal. It's the one you actually need to care about. Use stasis to keep it in place. There are two terminals remaining. You're nearly there. You also really don't want to stay in that room because on the roof of that room slash the floor when it turns the other way around are spikes which means the door will shut and you'll be trapped inside there. It's not shutting anymore though simply because we already did the puzzle and whenever a puzzle is completed the door stays open for some reason. Right, now I'm going to wait for a spin because we waited too late to get that chest. Unfortunately you can't feed the one on the inner bit because only the bottom bit will move out. The chest stays there, which is a shame. There we go, that's what we were after. And we get an ancient core. Nice. Okay. Next up, what we want to do is we want to get onto the other side of this wheel. We want to use its teeth as a platform. Uh, preferably not the malice one, but I guess that's what we're stuck with. Great. Okay, so there is a treasure chest we can get along one of these teeth. I'm just going to keep flying on over till we get to the right one. That didn't take long at all. There's a malice on one of the teeth. Blow it up and or at least shoot it down and you'll get the treasure unlocked. Sweet! Fire arrows. Nice. I don't know if that would be helpful specifically in this dungeon, but you know, good to have in general. Right, Scout Guardian 2. Ow. Bam. Nope, not quite. Bam. Oh my gosh, how am I having that much trouble? There you go, get out of here. Right, now that we're done with that, we're going to move the tr uh, trunk, not spout, to go way forward. Uh, mostly because I don't want the water in my face. It's kind of annoying me. Lovely. Right, the whole concept of this place obviously is moving water to make things move. Now, while we are here, we can see that we are just about to go forward onto the trunk area. We can't quite get to the head because that needs one more level higher. But before we go on, there's a switch here, which unleashes a waterfall, which we can obviously ascend up. A nice little checkpoint that 
never really gets done in every other, any other Divine Beast. You never get a checkpoint for how, how far you've gotten. But maybe it's because they're designed so that you don't need it. I don't know. Right. Up next, there are two things to deal with. There is a treasure chest on the trunk and a terminal at the end of it. The first thing first that I want to do is I want to get the treasure chest. For this, you need to actually be on the trunk. Obviously. And through the malice, you will get an ancient shaft. Nice. Next, we need to be on the other side of that trunk. So to do that, we need to actually go back on ourselves. What we need to do now is have the trunk all the way down, but from the doorway that we came to get out to this area, now we can see the trunk is well below us, so it can very easily get grabbable or landable. Right, now that we're here, we can now get the terminal on this region. Just have to bring it all the way up. Actually, I think we only have to go from the second one from the upmost position, but we'll get in anyway. Just one terminal remaining. I have faith in you. Alright, so for this final one, we need to first of all dive onto the head of the guy. Or well, actually, we don't need to, but this is how you get the treasure here. So just dive on. The Malice's eye is on the right side, but the treasure is on the left, so. Whoop! I missed. Whoop! I missed. Whoop! There we go. Thank you. Lovely. And that shall get us a what now? That'll get us some ice arrows. Nice. And there's nothing on the other end, sure. So now, if we look on our map, you can see that there is a treasure chest, first of all, in sight, and the terminal inside the head. So what we're going to do, oh, excuse me, is we're going to get on the higher path first, because if we go on the lower path, we have to do it all again. If we go up a level, you can see, first of all, actually, the terminal is surrounded by fire. There's another malice. Oh, good lord. Okay. Get out of here. Well, please. Where's your eye? There you are, on the roof. Bam. Which is helpful, because it's actually where we need to go next, to the roof. First, the coffin. Get out. Oh, get out of here, please. Thank you. Right. Once again, as we learned from the very beginning of the Divine Beast, we need to use the spinning magnesis technique on this next bit to open the roof. Eventually, if I can just about get this right. Come on. There we go. Right. And then, final thing, we need to move the trunk into the correct position, which is fifth from the top. That'll have the water spout go directly into the roof hole, extinguishing the terminal forever and allowing us to activate it. Beep. You activated all the terminals. Now you can start the main control unit. There should be a new glowing mark on your map. Head there. Be careful not to let your guard down. All right. And, of course, don't forget that treasure chest, it's one level lower and on our way back to the main control unit, since the final main control unit is, for some reason, in Rooter's butt. Right, uh, sure, I'll get rid of something for it, uh... Alright, and all we need to do now is just glide on over to the main area, right at the back of everything. A nice and simple divine beast, completed pretty simply too. I think. Demise 100 years ago. The 
regardless, I believe that you are well prepared for this moment. I have faith in you. Alright, what a blank Ganon. He's not too bad. First things first though, I am going to, of course, take off my pants because I'm that good. Right, his spear is a long reach. What you want to really be doing is obviously using your arrows. Let's use shock arrows because they're fitting. But what's really helpful is Cryonis, if I don't mess it up completely. Right, Cryonis is your best friend here because you have a whole lot of water everywhere and you can use them as a barrier for pretty much all of his moves. Just have them set up and that's not growing fast enough. Great. Ooh, I am... Yes, that foe is quite strong. Just... Okay. There... Wow. Are you serious? I could do this no hits in my practice file. But now... You know, my friend had trouble with this boss fight and ended up just hiding behind the main control unit, but that doesn't mean I need to have this trouble too. All right, fine. Oh, okay, good. We blocked it somehow. Right, so now I've decided to put attack up because I'm a little tired of the mistake you made of me. Right, spear, you just need to run to the side and he's done with. Now aim for his eye and you can get all you want. Dive, there we go, get a nice flurry rush. That just from simple back jumping? Sure, okay. Right, good, good. Now that you're down, bam, bam. I'm going to go with something a bit more powerful. If I can shoot three at once, that'd be good. If I can shoot three bomb arrows at once, that'd be even better, but I, I don't think that's going to allow me. Oh, no, I think it does. Although it only uses one. Interesting. Okay. Right. Now that you're up again, I'll prepare my shock arrows. But yes, all you really want to do is shoot at him and dodge his attacks at the same time. His spear, just run to the side and you should be good. His slice, you just do a backflip or just get out of his reach. Behind him behind the main chronic unit can work if you're not too defensive that you don't actually attack him at all. Oh, don't run perpendicular, come on. Or do run perpendicular, don't run parallel. Right, here we go, here we go. See, that's what I wanted. Just cry on, it's everywhere. It makes you feel controlled and powerful and defensible and smart. Bam, look at me. Right, put another one there. Get out of, oh, okay, you're gonna move? Sure. Right, come for me. There you go. Bam! Bam! You gonna do anything else, buddy? Or am I just gonna keep wailing on you like this? I can do if you want me to. Beep, boop. See, look at this. Nice and easy now that I'm not getting completely trashed now. Oh, of course, you smashed right through my crown. It's alright. Now, admittedly, this fighting style is a little bit slow for me in that, like... I would much prefer doing more flurry rushes, but at the same time, this feels cool. Like, you can flurry rush every enemy in the game. How many enemies can you, like, just do, like, a, a tower defense kind of attack on? It's kind of fun. That's why I like Water Gunner quite a bit, because he's just in the water. It's like, it's your, it's, you can do a whole theming with it all, you know? All right, let's get a final hit with our actual weapon, because I feel like getting my own accolade like that. Now time for phase two. Somehow he's stronger when he's upside down. I don't know. And not much room to operate indeed. You've only got these four panels and all the cryonis blocks in the world, but you know, let's not talk about that. So what you want to do is he'll shoot ice blocks at you. You have cryonis too. You can break them very easily. What's also available to you is, well, at least for us, a Bowser's Fury. I'm going to be cheap. I'll be honest, it is. But pretty cheap, but it's fun. Look at that. Instantly takes out a ton of health and stuns him right down. And honestly, there isn't much else you can see in this fight other than he's going to use icy attacks and start a laser beam at the end, which we might see, we might not. So I thought I might as well just go all out because look how strong Link has become. Most people will play this boss fight thinking with only like four or five hearts at most. They'll only have, no, well, no diviner things. They'll certainly not have the boss of fury. Like, look how much more stronger Link can be. Look at his full potential almost at this point. I want to showcase it. Plus, I like speeding up this boss battle nice and quick. And it's just kind of satisfying to have him just lift up all these massive icy blocks just to be completely trashed and all drop and shatter at his feet, you know? Right, we're going to do this one more time in your face too. Bam! And one final bomb arrow to the face.
Hello, Link. Because of your courage, my spirit is now free. And Ruta as well. Thank you. For I am now allowed by this freedom to be with you once again. Since I am now a spirit, my healing power would be wasted on you. I have no need of it. So therefore, I would like you to have it. Please accept Nifa's grace. Yesterday, I was awash in a pool of tears. I had nearly given up hope and resigned myself to being trapped here as a spirit for the rest of eternity. But now you're here. All this time, my hope was to see you once more. Promise me that you will not hesitate to call upon my power if you ever find yourself in need. Knowing that will let my spirit rest in peace. I must go. Ruta and I have our roles to fulfill. We are both honored to be able to play the role of support. We'll annihilate Ganon together. Farewell. Save her, Link. Save the princess. Save Princess Zelda. found a way to be useful to Link, and the other champions, of course. Our job will be to help Link as he fights Ganon inside the castle, however we can. Using your ability to drain Ganon of his power is key to our success. This is it. This will be our last chance, and everyone's last hope. If we seal him away, then we can restore peace to Hyrule. And both your duty and mine will be fulfilled. Father, are you well, I wonder? I want you to know I have always followed my heart. I'm sorry I made you worry. I wish I could see you again. Even just once more.
Thanks to you, all of the divine beasts have returned to us, and the spirits of the champions are free. We will all be awaiting your clash with Ganon at Hyrule Castle. 